This game is an absolute demolition job by Ali Reza Frugia. It was played in 2019 against Mila Zarkovic and in less than 23 moves, Ali Reza had completely blown her off the board. So Frugia kicked off with his favorite e4 and we had a Sicilian on board in response. We had knight f3, pawn to d6, knight to c3 now, so delaying the d4 push. We had a6 in response and now g3 from Frugia. So he's developing his bishop in a different way and possibly he'll play d3, possibly d4. He's keeping his options open. We had pawn to b5 now from Zarkovic, and now Frugia goes pawn to d4. So we have takes in the center, knight recaptures, and bishop to b7 here. The bishop comes into g2 developing, and we have knight to f6. Note that you could push this knight with pawn to b4, but after knight to d5, you're just helping white come into a dangerous square, and now this pawn is loose. So coming back here, that's why knight f6, and castles from Farouz Janelle. Again, he's not afraid of b4 because we just jump in like this. We had pawn to e6 now, rook to e1 coming to that dangerous file. And now this is where Zarkovic goes wrong. Now, you have to be a bit careful here as black. If you play a simple developing move like bishop to e7, you're running into a very common tactic of pawn to e5, hitting the knight and also hitting the bishop here. And when the smoke clears, black is just coming out a piece behind. So that's why you can't just go bishop to e7. So the most common is queen c7 here. You defend the b7 bishop and you also defend against this e5 push. But instead Zarkovic played knight f to d7. It's a bit passive really and a bit slow. And Frugia really pounces on this now as we'll see. So he plays a4, which is a very standard break in these lines. Zarkovic captures now. Again, you don't really want to go pawn to b4 because after knight to d5, you're in all sorts of trouble. This is very thematic, as we'll see. Now, if black captures this, we recapture and you're in check here. The only way to block that makes sense is with the bishop. And after knight f5, you're in real trouble here, losing the piece back with a worse position. And if black tries to block, we just go f4. So coming back here, that's why Zarkovic actually took on a4. Frugia recaptures. And now rook b4 from Frugia. This might look a bit strange, but we'll see the idea he's setting up. And this really reminds me of a Kasparov-Shirov game played in 94. I'll share the link below and cover that another day on the channel. So after knight c5 now, defending this unprotected bishop, here's the point of it. Rook takes on b7, not caring for the exchange, knight recaptures, and pawn to e5. So look at this, opening up this deadly bishop, and black has massive development problems now. So Zarkovic blocks that diagonal, which of course you want to do, it looks so sensible. But now if you want to pause and think about what Frugia played here, then please do so. Frugia says, I don't care if you've blocked the diagonal, I'm ripping it open, knight takes on d5. And after the pawn recaptures, he then jumps in with knight f5. So this was the point, he's vacated this f5 square now through this series of trades on d5. And I want to pause for a moment here because although white's given up a lot of material, a whole rook down, there's a massive attack in compensation. This queen's coming to g4 where it then looks at g7 here. The knight is very dangerous on f5 in support of that. This bishop from c1 could come out, especially if black plays g6. And this other light squared bishop is coming in like this. Plus we note that there's this dangerous pawn on e5. So that's why there's huge compensation for white. So black castles here, which is the best move in the position. And now Frugia picks up this pawn on d5 with the bishop. So he's hitting this unprotected piece here and looking through to the rook and dying up the king menacingly, supporting e6 later. So it's hard for Zakovic to find a move here. If you go, say, queen to c7 to defend like that, then you're running into bishop f4. If you try queen to d7, you're running into queen g4 and threatening mate here. And after the pawn pushes, we've just got too many threats going on with the bishop, knight, pawn in combination, and we'll see these themes playing out later. And if you try, say, rook a7, well then again, you're just running into problems after the knight takes here, queen recaptures, we've got pawn to e6. And we're essentially just ripping open the position in a deadly way. If black tries to block this out, well then we go bishop to e3, 
hitting this rook and there's just no good way to defend. If you try something like say knight to c5, well then we simply take, take, push e7. There's just too many threats in the position. So that's why here, Zarkovic instead tried to go for some counterplay. She played bishop to c5 here, looking at the f2 pawn, and she's basically trying to set up ideas of opening the f file and then generating some counterplay against f2. So Ferugia plays an excellent move here. He plays pawn to b4. And if the bishop takes this pawn, the problem is you're now running into queen g4 with a tempo. So not only are we threatening checkmate, we're also now threatening this bishop on b4. And after pawn to g6, white can just jump in and give a check king to g7 and now bishop to g5. We don't even bother picking up this bishop yet or this piece on b7. Instead, we're just going all out to make the king because if the queen takes the bishop here, then we go check. If king captures knight, then queen h4 is checkmate. So coming back here, that's why you can't really take this b4 pawn, it's poisoned. Zarkovich drops the bishop back and now Ferugia plays queen to g4, threatening that checkmate. We had pawn to g6 defending, and now pawn to e6, a killer thrust into the heart of the position. And look at the sorry state of these pieces, just stuck on the queen side, not participating in the defense of the king. And this is really the problem. If you take this pawn like this, we can just take with the rook, and there's too many discovered threats going on with this bishop cutting through. If black tries to take that with the queen, then we're running into rook takes on g6 here. And coming back here, instead Zarkovich desperately played queen to f6, trying to control this diagonal if nothing else. And now Ferugia can win in a couple of different ways. You can take on f7 here, which is more than good enough, but he plays pawn to e7, attacking the rook. The rook slid across to e8. And now if you want to find the shot he finished with, then please pause the video. He played bishop takes on f7, because if queen takes, we jump in with check. And we can win the black queen, but even stronger is after king g7, bishop b2. And again, there's these same mating ideas. And if the king captures this bishop, then here we're going queen c4 check. And there's nowhere for this king to actually return to. The queen has to block, and this is checkmate. And coming back here, if the king moves away, well now we simply take the rook on e8, and this pawn will soon be queening, or there'll be great material loss for black. So in this position, after bishop f7, Zarkovic resigned. So an absolute demolition job from Ferugia there. If you enjoyed this video, then click here to subscribe. And to see Ferugia destroying Magnus Carlsen, click here. Thanks very much for watching, and see you soon.